Hello there! This is DBT and this Art of Rooms. And alright, let's continue playing some more Asphalt Legends Unite. And today I'll be driving my 4GT Mark II in multiplayer to determine how far can it take me? That's right, this is the first time we're doing an episode of this series in Asphalt Legends Unite. Now, I used to make these videos in Asphalt 9, but now that this is the new version of the game, well, I'll continue doing these tests here. So like I said, I'm gonna go into multiplayer, but specifically in the World League series, and I'm currently in Silver 4. Now, if you're unfamiliar as to how this multiplayer series works, or this entire system, basically, much like in the old multiplayer, there's different leagues. However, these leagues also have sub-leagues or sub-tiers, however you want to look at it. For example, in Bronze League, we have Bronze 4, and once when you're there, you get to use any of these cars so long as you own them. Or there's a couple of free tries, but they're not upgraded. Then when you reach Bronze 3, you, you get a new selection of cars and you can use any of these cars or the previous ones, so on and so forth, right? So you go all the way to Bronze 1 and once you get past this area, you get to Silver 4, which is where I am right now. And that is precisely where the 4GT gets to be used. Now, there's a lot to talk about as to the balance of each one of these up tiers and whatnot. Because as you will be able to see, we have quite the, the mixture over here. We have some class for Silver 4. We have class D, class C, class B, class A, A, C, B, C. So it's quite a bit of a mixture, but it actually creates some really interesting matchups. But we're going to continue talking about it once we get into the race. But for now, let's have a look at my 4GT Mark II. I have it at the maximum amount of stars and I have golden the acceleration. That is to say, I applied the epics there. The rest is, well as high as it can be without the epics. Now, this is a very, very slow class B car. However, like I said, thanks to these new matchups, this may not play as big a role as it did in the old multiplayer in Asphalt 9. We're gonna look at that or see how it performs. For the acceleration, it's pretty high. In the handling department, it's also very high. And on the nitro, it's good. Not as straight up high, but you know, good. So with that out of the way, let's get into the race. So like I said, Thanks to this new matchmaking system and with the limited pool of cars and you know the mix of the of the classes of cars and whatnot, there is a lot of people unhappy as to how this new multiplayer system works, and I can understand why. Because some of these matchups can get in there a little bit crazy, and they're like, oh, I don't have any of the cars that are allowed for that particular sub-tier of the league and whatnot. So there's definitely some, some things that are worth criticizing, but at the same time, the part that I'm enjoying, oh Jesus Christ, the part that I'm enjoying a lot about this is precisely the strange matchups that you get nowadays. Because you know, if you played Asphalt 9, which I imagine most of you got watching did, in the classic multiplayer of Asphalt 9, you could always expect to see the same cars. You got, for example, to over here where, I'm, where I would get to use the 4GT Mark II, that's class B, right? So you would expect to see already a bunch of Hurricanes, you would expect to see the normal cars that you always see in class B, Chevrolet Corvette Grand Sports, things like that. Now, over here, because of how it is divided, this car doesn't get used in the Gold League. Instead, you get to use it since the Silver League and in the low tier of it on top of that. Because this car in there is not a very good class B car, but when you match it against class C cars and some low class B or low class A, then this can do some damage. So, over here, for example, I race against a GTR Nismo, which is class A, Viper GTS class A, uh, CN class B, Nismo A, Neo EP9 A, Ferrari 48 GTV, I think this is B, and another GTR Nismo. So despite this car being a bad, generally speaking, a bad class B, it can still beat the bad class A and some other cars of different um, classes and whatnot. This is why I said that this gets super interesting. Oh, and actually, just like that, I reached already the next uh, league. I got to Silver 3. Now, in Silver 3, we're going to have a quick look. Oh, I get some rewards for having reached the, the next one. Neat. What do I get? Oh, look at that. I just maxed out my Praga. I've gotten a lot of blueprints for the Praga. And thanks to that, now I have a Praga at four stars. Let's go. We're, we're going to do that later. Not for now. That's not the video. This is not the video for it. But I want to quickly show you what it's what now there is available in Silver 3. We have, for example, the Arash, we got the Dodge Viper, we had the Ferrari. I was actually racing against some of these cars, the Ferrari and, the, and this one, the Viper, because I was pretty close to reaching the next 
league now the problem that i have with this system is that i don't know exactly what is the rank in which you get from silver 4 to silver 3 from 3 to 2 and so on that still i hope game Love makes it more obvious but i now could use this car so we're obviously like i said this video is all about the 4gt so i'm gonna continue using it and see if we can fight against those cars as well now having said the, the the fact that there's new cars that i can use well i'm still using car a car from a previous sub tier of the league i'm still using this from uh silver four while i'm already in silver three and in the same way you can still use cars from bronze and whatnot so you can use uh, all the way up to the to the league that you're on and this is like I said one of the, those things that I've seen people complaining a lot about when it comes to this multiplayer system that is like oh but I don't have anything for for example for silver three that I just reached let's let's imagine I don't have a single car for that I'll be like oh my god I, uh, now I'm stuck because I don't have any of those cars well you don't need those cars now eh, oh I think I I've not that guy down sorry buddy um, you don't actually need them. Now, is it beneficial? Yes. Because like I said, some of these cars, because of the classes and whatnot, these matches can be really imbalanced. Unbalanced? Imbalanced? I'm not sure which one is the correct term. But I can see why it is indeed needed. But at the same time, you still are not completely out of options. And like I said, yes, I understand that there is some imbalance. But, oh God, oh, I thought I was going to get knocked down. Don't knock me down, buddy. Please don't do it. <laughs> Resist it. Uh, resisted them. Wait, did I finish third place? How? Oh, no, no, it was fourth. For a moment I saw... Can you rewind? I think I saw that it switched to third, but okay, never mind. Um, defeated by the Pin and Farina 4GT and a Neo, but I did beat a Pin and Farina, Pin and Farina, GTR Nismo, and this, this guy. All right, neat. So like I was saying, I understand that bringing cars, in this case, from uh, Silver 4 to Silver 3 matches, uh, it might be even more unbalanced, unbalanced, whatever because of the, the 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 way that the cars are organized but to be completely honest it was always in balance even in asphalt 9's multiplayer like i said if i'm on gold league in asphalt 9 and i bring my 4 gt it's completely in balance when this car is facing against hurricane Porsche's uh, 911 gt3 rss versus um mclaren f1 lambs you know all of that stuff so multiplayer has always been in balance now i'm not just you know defending this blindly i do agree that there there needs to be some uh more revision just to make sure because there's this whole problem with the ranks of this game not making a lot of sense always a car of a higher league uh compared to a car of a lower not league okay let me try that again. a car of a higher class with the same rank as a car from a lower class the one in the higher class is gonna perform better so that is to say a car from class B of a rank of 4,000 is going to perform worse than a car of class A at the exact same rank of 4,000. That is just how this works. So this creates this situation where you're going to have cars um, that even if it's at the same rank of this 4GT Mark II, they're still going to be faster or in general better performing. So this has been always a problem with the, with the ranking system of this game. And I think the only way to fix it is to completely rework the ranking system now that they're, um, you know, focusing more in doing matchups based on the rank before in the asphalt mine multiplayer this didn't matter too much again because just by principle in the base concept of multiplayer all of the races were in balance because of how wide the ranks of the cars in each class were but over here that now they're putting first place blah, blah, more focus into uh doing the matchups based on the rank i think maybe it wouldn't be such a bad idea to rebalance the car so that it it, it makes more sense and it stays a bit more consistent between the classes uh look at that double 4gt uh top two lovely uh, i beat an acura bentley continental this is c d d viper this is a and this is c i think all right well yeah that was a relatively easy easy race and just to reinforce the point that i was saying about the difference in the ranks and whatnot now this is a very extreme example because this car by itself it's already a very slow class b car even for the rank but it's of course because that's balanced um balanced out by the really good acceleration and all the other stats right but look at this car of a rank of 3100 it has a top speed of 314 and you compare it to a car that is barely 100 points above it and it goes 40 kilometers faster yeah worse handling worse nitro worse acceleration but this thing overall goes so much faster so it's just objectively a better car well I say objectively, but in general, there's still some nuance to be had based on which track you end up racing in and all of that stuff. 
But in general, I do see why people complain about this whole thing, and I do agree that some rework needs to be done. But overall, I'm still enjoying the, this multiplayer as is right now, precisely because, again, I'm doing some weird matchups, and actually my 4GT somehow is actually being competitive, where it's placed, somewhat competitive. I'm not gonna say that, wow, this is the best car out there, because it isn't. Oh, I'm glad I didn't end up doing a half barrel roll, because I hate those ramps so much. Um, it's being somewhat competitive, and yeah, I've gotten a couple of W's, I'm gonna get a bunch of L's as well, that's, that is the process, uh oh, I knocked someone down, sorry buddy. So that is basically the process, it's understood that you're not gonna win every single race, but I'm really enjoying this process precisely of doing all of these races with cars that have not really had much of a chance to shine before. Because, well, like I said, this car, and this is one car, one of my favorite looking cars that is, that is in a Lambo. I, oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, God. I thought I was going to wreck. Um, I absolutely love this car, but I could never really use it to any decent extent in multiplayer, precisely because it was so bad for its class. Oh, you mother... F that guy definitely didn't need to do that, but he just was like, well, if I can't beat you normally, I'm going to be a little bit of a... Cowardly individual and knock you down. Oh, look at that. I did steal that fourth place. Lovely stuff. Yeah, I stole it. We must have finished basically, yeah, at the same time. Oh, that was that was neat. But yeah, that 4GT, what a dirty, dirty player that can't even accept being defeated by a clean player. It's fine, it's fine. That's multiplayer in this game. Now, normally in these videos, I do like changing the colors of the car as I do more races, but I honestly really like this color combination that I have for the 4GT, and I don't know that I'll be able to replicate it later, so I'm just gonna keep it and just call it a day. I know it looks kind of weird, but I'm so tired of seeing this car in the standard livery, the blue livery, because in Asphalt 8, another game that I play a lot, uh, that is the only color available for the car. You can only drive it like that, so I'm tired of it. So now I'm happy to be able to see it in a different color, so this is fine by me. I imagine I'm not gonna get a fantastic result in this track, because this is a very top speed oriented track, and my car is completely the opposite of top speed oriented. So still, let's hope that I'm not dead last, that would be enough. But I I don't know why I have a feeling that at some point these guys are gonna catch up to me and they're gonna knock me down. Oh god! Yeah, that had to that was a defensive shockwave because you saw him. He also shocked me. He was ready. Oh, God. Here, here we go with the top speed situation. I just don't have the speed for it. You know what? I'm going to let you pass. Yeah, I wasn't going to risk it trying to block him. Because you try to block someone that goes faster than you. More often than not, that's probably going to end up in a knockdown. Um, you getting knocked down. So, ooh. No, never mind. I'm like, did it do the jump wrong? But no, he was just lagging. Hey, listen. Second place? That's not bad at all! Jesus, because I saw at least a couple of Vipers here. Um, yeah, this is a Viper. I did beat uh, NSX, NSX488. Bentley continued. Oh, the other Vipers, one disconnected and the other one didn't do very well. Okay, okay. So I did beat basically C, C, B, D, A, A, despite the disconnection. Technically, it counts as me beating him, so that's, that's fine by me. Oh boy, I think I'm starting to fly a bit too close to the sun because now I saw a Centenario, which again, a terrible class S car. I, I actually just made a video yesterday talking about MP2, the, what's the other multiplayer series called? I don't know. The one where you get to use any car that you already own. And I was actually playing with the Centenario where it actually was performing relatively all right. So that's nice. But over here in MP1, uh, the World Series, um, I don't know how the Chantinair is going to perform. The point that I'm trying to make over here is that that's a Class S car that goes like 360 kilometers an hour. So that's even way faster than mine. And that is, I imagine, because I'm slowly creeping towards Silver 2. Like I said, I'm currently... I mean, this car is from Silver 4. And I've been racing against a bunch of Silver 3 and obviously Silver 4 and whatnot. But now I'm starting to get Silver 2 as well. So things get complicated. But... Again, interesting matchups, and I cannot emphasize enough how much I like this variety. I was so tired, and, and you've seen it a lot, and you're going to see it again once the Hurricane it is actually available in the multiplayer carpool. Because in this particular series, the entire series of MP1, you cannot use the, the Hurricane. The Hurricane is not listed. I don't think so. So for this series, no Hurricanes. Thank to all the 80s. 
but there's gonna be another series at some point where the hurricane is gonna be included and you're gonna still see it a lot but the point that i'm trying to make over here is that you know how spam some cars are but now they actually because of all of this variety because you know you're not the moment that you get to silver for example it, you cannot instantly use a gallardo or whatever king you have on class e no you have to work your way up until you can use those type of cars so i don't know i think this is very interesting and like i said i've seen so many people complaining about the system but personally 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 i've been enjoying it to no end yeah there's some parts that get a little frustrating because it's like god damn it for example i think it was bronze 3 that took me quite a bit to get out of but in the end i did get out of it and once i did it, it's like oh the doors opened again and i got to use another bunch of cars it was fantastic yeah the centenario one like i said this car of all of this i think is the fastest yeah um so yeah but still bit an acura for gt an acura viper gtr nismo and another acura man still some really good results over here oh yeah now there's also mclaren p1 over there and this is a top speed track as well much more so than uh what was it was it paris is that the one that i was talking about earlier or which one was it i don't remember but yeah over here i do imagine i'm gonna get a pretty bad result because this is one of the most tops no 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 I, I, the the previous one that i was talking about top speed was um, norway but yeah this is this is definitely one of the og top speed tracks so unless everybody does a terrible job and then start messing up real hard or knock each other down or something i don't imagine getting anything better than sixth place oh wait a second someone got knocked down see what i'm saying um oh god that was a terrible terrible oh here they come they're behind me they're behind me one shot wave come on come on acceleration save me the, the acceleration saves this car a little bit precisely because the moment that you get into a jump and if you have nitro at all or even better you have shockwave this thing accelerates super super damn quick but once you get in the land again or even when you're mid-air if you're in mid-air for too long oh god don't touch me buddy don't touch me come on, come on. if you're mid-air for too long your top two is still not very high so you're gonna have problems staying there whoa fourth place you know what no wait that was third look it said fourth place when i would look top rewind it a little bit and you will see that right before i cross the finish line it said fourth and then as i crossed it it said third so i don't know what to make of it but yeah defeated by the viper and the mclaren p1 which are faster cars but i did defeat uh for gt acura acura another p1 and a 48 gtv okay look at all that happening whoa and i just got to silver too like i said i'm i'm really flying close to the sun over here i think i'm getting to the point Ooh, more rewards wait oh rich silver one to get more okay okay i need to get silver one to get another reward then why you give me that that message i didn't i didn't need to see a message that said you don't get a reward now <laughs> anyway uh so silver what silver two yes because we looked at this so in silver 2 you get to use the renault sport rso1 the clk gtr acronym sx gt3 evo aston martin db12 there's a p1 and the nissan so i was facing all the way to silver one once i fought that centenario wow okay well the more you know but of course we need to dri continue driving my 4 gt because yes now because of this whole thing of the multiplayer having limited cars selections that you can do and whatnot Probably this is gonna also alter the way that I make these videos. Right now, this worked perfect because, well, I wanted to do a video with the 4GT and I was in silver in the correct league and sub tier. But later on, I don't know how I'm gonna do. I don't know. I may have to do these videos on the how far can it take me uh, based on where I am in multiplayer currently and what cars are available and, you know, try like that. But again, the beauty of all of this is that this will allow me to do some tests of really some cars that I would never have paid attention to before. So this opens the doors quite a bit, even to cars that maybe sort of, that used to be sort of bad before in Asphalt 9, but over here they have a bit of a more um, interesting role. Did that guy just try to 360 me? I think he did. That Acura doesn't seem to want to 360 me, so I'm going to respect them and not do that. Oh, God! Damn it! I'm fine, I'm fine. Come on, come on. All right, survive that somehow. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Hold on, hold on. I'm trying to focus here. 
Trying to do my... Ooh, look at that. He just tried to knock me down. Ha, ha, ha. Joke's on you. Now I got at you. Now, it's likely that he still can catch up to me because I think he was a faster car. But, hey, listen. All things considered, my my poor 4 GT Mark II with the slow, slow speed is still doing pretty, pretty decent overall. Okay, here comes the... Normally, these jumps are pretty good or this area is pretty good for jump speed. Except that with my, with my acceleration... That can also play in my favor. Just need to make sure to always have a bit of nitro for the jump. And then this section with the drift. This car drifts pretty all right. So that also kind of works in my favor. But of all things, the, the Acura NSX beat us all. Look at that. And that's just a regular Acura NSX. Class C car. Mid-class C car. And yet, we got a very fun race over there. Um, yep, and a sex, but did beat the Nismo Neo. This is the Neo that tried to knock me down. <laughs> Ferrari Monza, uh, Pinin Farina H2, and Neo EP9. Man, when did you see these cars in multiplayer and asphalt mine? Whoa, okay, now there is a Centenario. I saw a Brabham. Ooh, can't wait to use my own Brabham. Is that one in shining in red because of connection issues? Um, ooh, another top speed oriented track. Man, that's fine. Oh, good! Oh! Well, that's gonna be RIP for my race, but you know what? It's all right. I think this shows indeed that there's some fun to be had over here, and you know, it, it actually shuffled things enough where I think, so long as people are open to get out of their comfort zone of always using the same four cars or three cars per, per class because they're the best that they have, they get out of that idea, of that mindset that Asphalt 9, you know, uh, uh, ingrained in all of our brains. And I include myself because, yes, of course, I was part of that too. But if we're, we are willing to get out of that zone, to experiment, to try with all of those cars that we have never paid attention to because we had absolutely zero reason to pay attention to. And we're willing to try it out and test it out and grind it out and all of that. I think that's a lot of fun. And personally, at least this is uh, my very own personal opinion, I enjoy not always going, always doing class A to class S races, because that's where I would normally end up in multiplayer, because it was so easy in Asphalt 9 to get out of the beginner league. It was so easy to get out of the silver league. It was so easy to get out of the gold league. And then I would, you know, spend some more time in platinum and elite. Over here, the fact that I'm in different leagues, spending a bunch of time, it takes longer to get um, to, to other leagues and whatnot. It allows you to stay here for quite a while and test these cars and drive them and really try to make the most out of them. I don't know, I'm enjoying this process a lot. And like you saw, this 4GT somehow performed pretty well and then I completely messed up and that ruined my entire race, but it's fine, it happens, it happens. All right, if you enjoyed this video, you know what to do, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel, because remember that I post literally daily, not always about this game, but often enough where you're gonna see it a lot of time. But all right, that's all for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.